There is never a shortage of Mt. Gox FUD, and the people who love to use it the most are altcoiners attempting to promote their own projects. And of course, Bitcoin showing signs of life is a perfect opportunity to bring back some of that fun. We wake up this morning. Yesterday, Bitcoin showed signs of life, right? We hit the 65K USD region. People are cheering. All the, all the all those amazing traders waiting for the 42K. Meh, who knows if that shows up. But what's really interesting, what's really interesting is always the timing of the Mt. Gox FUD. And although we've done many other clips about the Mt. Gox FUD, I don't think that we've ever covered it like this. So what I wanted to do was I, I wanted to show some of the some of the essentially the narrative that altcoiners like to kind of dangle in front of people just to remind them how scary and how dangerous the Mount Gox FUD really is. So we've got this video from the Dollar Cost Crypto channel, uh, and here we go. That this is this is probably Richard Hart is probably the most well-known Mount Gox fudder. And the thing about Richard is that he is an excellent speaker, okay? So it is very easy to fall into the trap of this guy knows what he's talking about and therefore he is not going to lie to me. Now, those two things, those two things don't necessarily have to be true, okay? Which means just because he knows a lot, it doesn't mean that he's not going to lie to you because in the end, we all know Richard Hart created Hex and Pulse Chain and all it was was a massive dump on bag holders. But in order to amass these bag holders, he needed some very powerful FUD. And one of the most powerful FUDing points in this space is the Mt. Gox Bitcoins or Bitcoin. Sorry, the Mt. Gox Bitcoin. And what happens when those hundreds of thousands of Bitcoin hit the market and tank the price to zero? And I, I mean, I heard this so many times. And, and Richard, once he created Hex, would always talk about how the Bitcoiners aren't aware what this means. And this is going to kill the price of Bitcoin and blah, blah, blah. So let's let's dive into let, let's dive into some of this nonsense. Richard's been one of the person talking about that for like ever. I mean, like I, I remember yeah. him talking about that since like 2020. Over a year ago. Yeah, yeah it was, yeah, it was yeah, two, yeah. almost two years ago. He's been saying, hey, the Gox coins are coming out. What are you guys going to do then? Uh, you know, what what then? Nobody talks about that. Right. You know, and that getting dumped on your head. So a bunch of a bunch of uh, um, bad actors or people who weren't responsible or accountable for what they did to the crypto space at that time are now – going to have the coins that they had locked up for years released. It's going to happen. I just want to pause there for a second. So how is somebody that got their coins stolen a bad actor? And I, I just, I just want to put that into perspective, right? Now, 100%, it could be negligence. Sure, it can be ignorance. Sure, it can just be laziness. But how... Is it that the person who is the victim in all of this is somehow the antagonist, somehow the, you know, the evil person? How are they a bad actor? I, I don't get it. And again, th th this kind of gives you a, a little bit of insight into the mind that ends up purchasing uh, a clear Ponzi scheme from a deranged scammer. Anyways, let's continue happen you know and it is going to bring more pain and nothing you can do about it because there's lawyer this is shit's been sitting there for for years this yeah. has been going on for years people want their money they want their money and everyone's like oh but it's in a it's in a it's in a um a bear market they don't want to sell them in it when it's at the bottom no 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 when those coins got confiscated they weren't 20k i'll guarantee you that much <laughs> no sir 300 bucks maybe 300 maybe. bucks maybe a coin so those people are drooling right now at 20k so and there's lots of people that need to be paid lots of lawyers that need to be paid um you know there's bills and 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 you know yeah. years of waiting and i guarantee you there's gonna be you know 
somebody's going to, somebody's going to dump them. They're going to get dumped. Oh yeah, man. Like, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of crazy. I mean, but here, like, actually, I, I, so I just want to stop right here. This particular video is a year old. Okay. This is, this is a year old. And what's really crazy is that Bitcoin, of course, came back from 15 K to go all the way back up to 73 K. So if you listened to these guys fucking wrecked, okay, like plain and simple, you just, you got wrecked and, and, and a further point on that. Okay. While these guys are sitting here fudding Bitcoin, right? Letting you know how terribly Bitcoin's going to do this is the hex chart. This is the weekly hex chart. Every single one of these candles is one week of price activity. Now, if you don't understand what happened here, I'm going to explain it to you. This is a pump and this is a dump. Okay. This is another little pump right here. And this is a dump. And you'll notice where is it trending to? It's trending to zero. Now, of course, right? The, 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 the shit coin lovers, right? The, the, the Richard Hart enthusiasts will be like, well, you're showing hex. It, it pulse chains, the real thing. So after he wrecked all of his hex bag holders, okay, after he wrecked all of these people buying a bunch of useless Louis Vuitton crap, he launched this piece of garbage, okay, pulse chain. Now, something that people don't really pay attention to is the fact that um, pulse chain nor hex will trade against Bitcoin. And and that's really because nobody will actually give you Bitcoin for these shit coins. They're only willing to give you another shit coin for this shit coin. And I know right now that this hex chart doesn't look so bad, but that's just because it only started trading. Okay. It didn't start trading that much that, that long ago. So we're going to wait that out. We're going to wait that out. Now let, we're going to try to give a, a different perspective here. As of today, it looks like some of those Mt. Gox funds have started to move to exchanges. Now, actually, we reported on this last week, and last week was when these coins actually started moving. Uh, but here we go. We get an official statement out of Kraken. We have successfully received creditor funds, BTC and BCH, from the Mt. Gox trustee. While we work to distribute funds as quickly as possible, please anticipate 7 to 14 days for funds to be credited to your account. The amount you will receive has been determined by the trustee, and we will distribute according to their instructions. Based on what the shitcoiners would have you believe, um, we should be actually going down. But instead, what's happening is, is that we're creating support around the 58K. I don't know, the 58K gang just loves this. <laughs> Screw you guys. But it looks like we're just making incredibly long-term support around 58K, which is no surprise to us. If you listened to the Mt. Gox Futters, you'd be out. You wouldn't be holding Bitcoin. Instead, you'd be chasing some ridiculous shitcoin. Samson often puts out a lot of very lofty hopium. But I do think that in this particular case, he is, I, I think, being reasonable. Okay, Only about 20% of the distributed Gox coin will hit the market. 80% will just move to coal storage or be borrowed against. However, 100% of the distributed Bcash will hit the market. And indeed, he's not wrong about that. <laughs> people. So that's, so now let's think of this scenario, right? Roger Ver puts out his book about hijacking Bitcoin, which I covered in a previous clip and totally debunked because the block size wars actually came out during that time, uh, instead of providing some strange revisionist history years later, where, you know, Roger Ver is this, uh, this victim, uh, which again, is very typical of narcissistic personalities. Narcissistic personalities often see themselves only cycling between victor and victim, okay? So they, they, they don't ever or very rarely take responsibility for their actions. And if they do take responsibility for their actions, it is only to lure you in further so that they can continue to do the victim and victor cycle. Um, but the point is, he comes out with his book. There's a whole bunch of noise made by paid accounts around BCH and it's the real Bitcoin and blah, 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 and all this stuff. I can't use it. I can't use Bitcoin to pay for my coffee and all these stupid stories. And then lo and behold, right? Lo and behold, look at that. The Mt. Gox distributions get started and there's going to be a lot of BCH that's going to hit the market. And most likely, most likely that is going to sink the price 
of BCH, because in all fairness, why would you hold not Bitcoin when you can just dump it and actually hold Bitcoin? Anyways, guys, look, the Mt. Gox FUD, it's finally, I, I'm so glad to say this, the Mt. Gox FUD is finally coming to an end because once these coins get distributed, it's over. All the shit coiners that have been sitting there touting to you how Bitcoin is going to tank and go to zero and the Mt. Gox coins are going to crash Bitcoin, they've all been wrong. Every single one of them has been wrong. And if you listen to them, really what happened is you got scammed out of holding your Bitcoin. Anyways, that's all I wanted to talk about today. I'll catch you tomorrow, guys.